from San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMworld and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to VMworld 2015. I'm Stu Miniman and joined with me as my co-host on the director set here for theCUBE is Brian Gracely. It's day three, as we always say, that these events, they're marathons, throats are a little bit raw, uh, you know, we been getting our, our steps in with the Fitbit uh, and, uh, you know, the head starting to say, you know, brain's full, can I go home now? Um, but, uh, you know, there's no keynote this morning because there's a little more, more time to dig into it. Um, Brian, you know, we haven't had, you know, a, a ton of time yet to talk about uh, kind of the, the, the developer community, what's going on, um, really some of the shifts that are happening uh, in the industry, and, and what does that mean to the people? So, right. I mean, you, you, you're a great case study yourself. You and I, both infrastructure guys, both been around the virtualization community a while and a V expert. Uh, you know, I, I started, you know, when you pivoted your podcast to talk a lot about the developers and everything, it was one that I listened to a lot. So right. can, can you give us a little insight as to, you know, your take, you know, what did you do and, and uh, you know, what, what should, you know, the typical virtualization person uh, be thinking about in this right. space? Right, right. So, you know, for me personally, um, you know, the, the virtualization sort of revolution uh, was right in the middle of it. Um, but to me, what was always interesting was, was these sort of new modern applications, you call them cloud native and, and other things these days, and, and how that impacted the business. So the infrastructure piece always impacts the, the bottom line in terms of cost. This was going to impact the business. So it, for me, it personally was very interesting. My biggest takeaway in what I'm seeing is, um, you know, the industry gets excited about things. They get excited about buzzwords like DevOps and microservices and cloud native applications. Um, but it's becoming very clear there's, there's a, a camp of the technology and people working on it that um, it's very technology centric. The companies are very technology centric. They're making technology centric products. So, you know, we're out here in the Bay Area, lots of companies out here. But when you, when you take it back to mainstream, um, that DevOps kind of gets teased apart. And, and really what it becomes is, Ops needs to be better in general. They, they need to automate more. We've been talking about automation for a long time. Um, they need to look to automate more. They need to make more consistent environments. And they need to prepare for that new applications need different stuff. So that might mean object storage instead of block storage. It might mean uh, SDN. We had a great you know, talk yesterday with, uh, with um, Armor about SDN and why you need dynamic infrastructure. Um, and then, you know, I spent some time this week. Uh, we've had DevOps at VMworld. We've had sort of developer day at, at, at uh, VMworld. Really what I think is coming out of that is, is a very kind of clear message to this audience, which is all the things we've kind of been talking about in terms of automating, um, you have to do, but before it was like, I'll oh, save money or do it. Now it's, there's a business imperative, and, and that's becoming clearer and clearer to me. Yeah, so uh, Brian, walking around the show, I've talked to a number of people that they're starting to use the terminology that, that, that you've put out there, uh, structured and unstructured, yep. when we talk about uh, the, these cloud native platforms. Right. Um, we're going to have a panel uh, later today digging yes. into some of that. Uh, at least I know one of the people's, uh, one, of, one of the main keynotes at the, the developer uh, right. event here at uh, VMworld. Um, Walk us through a little bit that kind of structured, unstructured, and uh, g give our audience a peek of, uh, in into the research that you're going to be publishing. Right, so th the simplest way to think about it is uh, there are a lot of platforms, um, you know, sort of platforms for modern applications. So some of them that people know because they're big brand names, so Cloud Foundry, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, uh, HP has a Cloud Foundry variation, IBM. Um, Red Hat has something called OpenShift, that's their PaaS platform. Uh, and then there's a number of smaller companies, uh, you know, uh, AppSera, who, you know, was founded by Derek Collison, who started Cloud Foundry. Uh, and then there's a number of technologies that are coming together. So we had CoreOS on yesterday, uh, HashiCorp's a company that's going to be on today, makes Vagrant that a lot of people know. The simplest way that I've found it to think about it is um, your, your application platform in a lot of cases is going to match kind of how your organizational structure is. So the more structured your organization is, so if your business is probably larger, uh, multi-business group, um, compliance is a, is a big part of what you do, you're probably going to look at these more structured uh, application platforms because they've got compliance built in, they've got granular policy. If you are more sort of native DevOps, greenfield, technology centric, the, the unstructured ones are a little better fit. They give you a little more flexibility. They let you kind of pick and choose what you want to do. Um, and it, to me, it's becoming clearer that they both have a place in the world. This isn't a winner take all. Um, and at the end of the day, they're both there to help people build you know, newer applications and get them deployed quickly. Yeah, so uh, you know, one of the things I look at in this space, Brian, is 
you know, when we talk about PaaS or we talk about containers and yep. Docker, yep. Um, I should be able to just deal with my applications and help that, that really tough migration to a new, more modern, uh, you know, the, 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 that cloud mobile right. uh, type of application. But there's still some ties underneath. At DockerCon yeah. this year, uh, there was a lot of talk about, well, you know, how does this impact storage? How does it impact networking? Right. What's going on right. here? Uh, and even with the, the platform discussion, uh, it's will there be a predilection? Does it matter? It's, oh, I can put it on Amazon or Azure or right. you know, vCloud Air. Will there be some affinity there? Will be, there be things that baked in? Even Intel gets involved in this space a lot because right. they're going to make enhancements. So, you know, am I going to be able to cleave apps from infrastructure or are there still going to be that ties? In, and what does that mean to somebody like VMware from, yes. from the hypervisor standpoint? Yeah, so a couple of points to that. Um, so we did a panel, we did a panel uh, session yesterday, really good panel session. For the VMware crowd, the thing that, that everybody will tell you now, and you know, for initially it was like everything will move to containers, it's that typical technology buzz, like every, you know, old's dead, we're going to move everything to the new, we all know that never happens. Uh, but the thing that, that we're hearing over and over again is um, containers plus virtualization is a reality. Uh, what we saw from VMware this week with Project Bonneville, Project Photon, um, those you know, uh, vSphere integrated containers, um, they're, they're adapting the, contain the virtualization technology. They're realizing it's got to get faster, it's got to be a little more nimble. Uh, and the nice thing about that for VMware infrastructure people is if, if that vSphere layer is there and it becomes more appropriate for containers, now I can take advantage of the other tools that I have. Maybe vSAN becomes appropriate, maybe NSX becomes appropriate. Um, and I think the reality is, you know, now that people are starting to understand containers, which means you know, the net cloud native apps, um, they're going to start to align that infrastructure underneath it and, and it's not going to move as fast, which is good for a lot of this crowd because they've got enough things coming at them as it is. Yeah, um, I guess you know that, that's a big discussion point we've all been having. Is yeah. you know Pat laid out this 30-year vision, right? Um, and talking about some of the hallway discussions, and people said, "Oh, some of this cloud piece here, you know, you're, you're too far out. Right. We're pushing too far." Um, you know, how, how do you balance that, Brian? I mean, just you know, one of my points I always look at is you know the ch typical enterprise. Yeah. You know, when you're a product guy, you're saying, "Oh, here's my release that's coming out today." Right. Your typical customers three years back, and when you're given the roadmap of a couple years out, and we just have a language barrier between you know, where we're right. going and where I am today, and, and that's one of the toughest things for customers is to kind of mine that gap. Right, so we're, in a, we're you, know, you and I are in a unique position. So the work we do at Wikibon, some of it's obviously, you know, we're looking from a vendor perspective, what's strategy, how do the different players are, but we get to look at a lot of customer perspectives. Um, if you're a customer and you're saying, look, it feels like it's going too fast, I think the question you have to ask yourself is um, not, can I slow everything down? It's, it's, do I have to do something different inside my business? And this is where you start to get into hearing people like, like Gartner say, you know, buy modal IT. You're hearing other people say there, you know, there's different ways. Of, I think what we see for the successful companies, and, and this is at enterprise companies, not just startups, um, they're beginning to have to figure out how to build an innovation team that's going to go look at those things and kind of build lighthouses. And um, you know, we did some, we published some research about like public cloud sightings. We've talked about it a few times. Um, you know, VMware is a company, six, seven, eight billion dollars in revenue but Amazon and Azure, you know, two giant public clouds, at least that much revenue or more. So you can't necessarily look at it and say, well, it feels like VMware's going too fast and I'm going too slow because those other companies are going twice as fast. Uh, you got to figure out that, that dynamic. Yeah, uh, all right, so uh, Brian, just want to give you an opportunity to share, you know, w what other takeaways do you have, kind of, you know, what's the same, what's different uh, VMworld 2015? Yeah, so, um, you know, VMware's, you know, you, you and I joked about it, VMware is, is getting into a place where uh, slow and steady is, is very good for them, right? People want uh, infrastructure to be steady, they want it to be highly available, um, so there's always a certain amount of, you know, uh, just progress at VMworld. Um, you know, I'm excited about the, that they're branching out into, into DevOps and, and developers and stuff. Um, still a little underwhelmed with some of the, the vCloud stuff. I think I need to see a recognition that, you know, customers want to interact with more than one cloud. Um, but, you know, overall, I think, I think people are excited about, uh, you know, converged infrastructure. I think there's a lot going on there. Um, I think obviously, you know, 23,000 people, they're still super passionate about VMware, about vSphere, about all of that. Um, it's, been very, it's been a very positive week. People have been excited. Um, the rumors haven't overtaken the thing, which has been good. They're allowed to focus on learning. Uh, we talked about the, we talked to the, you know, the V Brown Bag guys. We're going to talk to the VMUG team. People want to advance their career, and that's a good thing. People are positive about technology, and whenever they're positive about technology, it, it's better for the whole industry. Yeah, it, it's funny. You bring up uh, some of the community stuff. Uh, I, I mean, 
if you look at the social component of what goes on, yeah. um, I feel we actually went through uh, the last two or three years. We went through uh, you know what's that the trough of dis disillusionment yeah. um, because you know we used to get all the bloggers together in the bloggers lounge, right? And now like well you know there are people that blog, but you know most of us that write ended up with jobs that you write or you yeah, do some on the side, your job. Um, uh, uh, things there, but. You know, we're kind of back more. I, I feel there's more of the social component. The community's kind of there. Um, it's not. I, I, I got real worried that it was just these echo chambers of you know, you know, one new startup that just bashes everybody and comes yeah. out, or you know, the large enterprise and trying to be the loudest out there. And uh, there, there's still things we need to work through, but it, you right. know, it, it's settling down. VMworld has become very much like Twitter in that the users have sort of built the new features and done it. When you come to VMworld, yes, VMware dictates a message and what goes on, but there are so many other activities that got created by, by end users, for, from Vodgeball to VBacon to, you know, to VBrownBag, and, and that's good for the community. It means you know, there's opportunity, they can, they can have a say in it, and uh, you know, it's, it mirrors the open source community a little bit. All right, so, so uh, last question I have you, Brian. One of the biggest problems we have at a show like this is, I mean, it's not one fire hose. There's 20 fire hoses yeah. going on all the time. There's so much content. No matter you know what your focus is, you know you couldn't even you know uh, you know cover you know oh I just want to you know look at the storage enhancements that uh, VMware did. Uh, you know we've been going through rapid succession of right. you know so many interviews here. I mean I'd love to say everybody go watch the playlist. There's 51 interviews we've done in the first two days, and we're going to do a ton more today. What, what advice do you give as to how people should systematically go through, you know, how, how do you source it, how do you leverage content uh, from a show like this? Yeah, you know, a couple of things. Obviously, we're, we're a little biased. We think what we've produced here is, is really good. Um, the nice thing is we, we put it in small snippets. So um, you can go get the highlights from, from us, from, from the Cube. Uh, the other thing, the next thing for me, sort of the next tier down is go find your favorite technology blogger, the person that's in that. In some cases, they may still work for a vendor, but uh, there's lots of people that do summaries of them. Um, that's an, a great next tier, and then whatever your one you know, passion is, your one area, then go dig into that. But I think you tier that, start with the cube, find a good technology blogger, and then dig into what you can find off of VMworld. Yeah, interesting point. So we're going to have uh, you know, some of our friends doing podcasts on the cube today. Right. Uh, Geek Whispers are going to have on Scott Lowe. You know, Scott works for a vendor, but right. he writes great stuff. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, Brian, you and I both changed jobs and said, you know, so many people look at the hat and the title and who they work for, um, whereas, you know, if you read their stuff and if you look in the community, the, the community helps endorse and understands, you know, it's, it's, it's really the person, their knowledge. We all have our kind of technology biases and preferences, but, um, you know, good content, you know, finds it always, a home. It always finds wins. Yeah, we've all learned that, yeah, if it's, the content's not good, nobody reads it, and you're going to stop writing it, so. Uh, but no, it's exciting. I, I, you know, and, and you, you talk about geek whispers. This show is as much about technology as it is careers. Folks like that are, are helping you figure out how do I navigate my career? What's the next big trend, and, and so forth. So it's exciting to be part of all that. Yeah, and, and the last thing I'll say is, you know, what, what we do is, of course, we, we've got so much, you know, just raw information, metadata, and getting back from the community. I mean, this streams its way out, um, and more video we'll be doing back from the studios. Um, you know, plenty more events we'll be doing if you go check out SiliconAngle.tv, and of course, Wikibon.com is where all the research is. Uh, Brian's banging out a lot on cloud. I'll be giving all my summaries on what's happening in Converge and Hyperconverge. Uh, and uh, you know we've got lots more content here. So please uh, always welcome your comments, feedback. Let us know what you like. Um, if you say you know Brian's socks are, are a little bit uh, you know better than mine, you know that that, that, that that's okay. But uh, any any closing thoughts on, on uh, day three wrap? Uh, no, good morning. I, you know I'm excited about the we, we've got a bunch of panels. We're going to get be very community oriented today and. Uh, Wrap it up, it's been a good week, and uh, hopefully, like you said, people give us feedback. We want to hear what, what, what we can help you learn about. All right, yeah, we're always happy to you know, give feedback to the, you know, uh, you know, share with the community what we can. So uh, thank you so much for watching. We've got lots more content here, SiliconANGLE TV's wall-to-wall -wall coverage of VMworld 2015. Thanks for watching.